Hey y'all. Good morning. After 11 months of living in this home, I'm finally getting around to cleaning out and designing these two front island beds that are in my front yard that are surrounded with a border of concrete curb. So as you can see, I already have some of this front bed planted. This is on the right side of the, the house near the driveway. I tried to video that first part of my planting this, but my phone died. So anyway, I'm going to explain to y'all what I'm using and a little bit about my thought process. So over here on the very end, we had about, I guess, a third of this bed from about here to here was full of old camellias as well as some old overgrown raggedy looking drift roses that were the hot pink, almost red color. So there were several of those plants that were in the ground here on this very right side. So over the course of the last several months, I've just kind of been piddling out here and just like digging some up here and there. Well, last, this past Thursday, I got out here before we left to go to the beach for the weekend and I dug out the last of the plants that were in this side of the bed as well as some plants that were over there on the other side near the boxwood and some camellias that were in front right around in this area of the Japanese maple. So I went out to a local nursery and I saw some grasses that I didn't I didn't buy them immediately but I came back home and I like could not stop thinking about these grasses. Like has that ever happened to y'all where you go to a nursery and you're like trying to be frugal and you see something and then you get home and you're like, God, like I really want that plant. Like that was how it was for these grasses. These are called sand cord grasses and they are like what I think will be a showstopper in this front bed. Sand cord grasses are native to the southeast. You see them all along the highways in Florida if you're driving down to the beach because they can handle, like they thrive in horrible conditions along a highway, drought tolerant, sandy soil tolerant. So these grasses get about five feet tall, I think, and they're gonna get a good, a good bit wider than what these are. So I've got three of the sand cord grasses in kind of the right middle of this bed. And you can see right there, I, I dug up what was a rotted stump. And I think it was must have been a pine tree because it was a really big stump. So then on the other side, over here on the curve of this bed, I've got three bubblegum pink um, uh, knockout roses, which I have just drank the knockout rose Kool-Aid because I really like them now. I hadn't always liked them. But I put the one over there in the other bed that y'all saw, the transformation bed video. I planted one bubblegum pink knockout rose. It's just doing great. And I love the color. And when they're tended to, they can look really, really pretty. And they have this bluish tint to the foliage. So when you put it up next to something that's just that more traditional green color, like it really does look blue. So... I thought that three of these would be a really good choice to kind of have over here on the end to give it more of like um, an ethereal kind of more playful look because over here in the center you've got these three really sturdy structured camellias that bloom out white in the winter time. And so anyway, I have a really great cleaned out front part of this entire bed and let's see I'd say it stretches maybe about 30 feet possibly maybe more 
So I have the opportunity to do some really good, fun, updated plantings. And so what I'm thinking about doing for this front row, and not necessarily in just like a very rigid line, but just kind of dotted throughout this little bed are some Francis Mason Abelia. I already have one in the ground. It was not thriving where it was because you can see all of these bare limbs. So what I'll probably do is, now that I've transplanted it, I'll come in and I'll sacrifice the blooms and that foliage because it doesn't look that great anyway, and I'll cut it off and it'll leave a lot of the bare stems, but what that's gonna do is force growth, force leaves onto those bare stems. So in a matter of weeks and months, it's gonna look like a really full, lush plant and I can throw some fertilizer on it and it should really come back looking great. So I was thinking Francis Mason Abelia, knockout roses, sand cordgrass, you've got for your top tier, your tall layer, okay, you've got the Japanese maple, which is a blood good, and then you've got three large mid-size, not large, but mid-size camellias, and then in front of this Japanese maple, what I'm thinking is limelight hydrangea, a lot, little lime, little lime, little lime, to give me a fluffy look in the front of that Japanese maple, okay? And that will take up this space. And then over here, I have some azaleas, some encore azaleas, autumn carnations that are not getting enough sun where they are. So I'm gonna put autumn carnation, autumn carnation, those bloom bubblegum pink, by the way. And I kinda just, figure out a few places where I can put some autumn carnation in that get about four, four and a half to five feet tall and wide, I believe. Uh, and then also kind of do the same thing over here, the Francis Mason Abelia. I have 20 Francis Mason Abelia I counted in this landscape and they're all planted in these random places. But what I'm gonna do is plant them all kind of in like a mass so that you can really see them shine. And so that's what I'm thinking for this bed over here near the driveway. If you look at the house, it's a very traditional home. I came from a cottage, so that was my gardening style, was cottage gardening, and I love it, I always will. Like I will always love cottage gardens. But it's important to me also that my garden and my landscape really agrees and complements the style of my home. So because I need to work with what I've got, I'm not going to do any of those cottagey plantings. I'm going to actually try to do something in the front that's more traditional and stately. And I've got these beautiful, big groupings of camellias on the right side of this bed, in the middle of this bed, and then over on the left side of this bed, as well as a boxwood over here too. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna plant fewer colors in these two island beds to give you kind of a softer palette, a less stimulating palette, because the house, I don't think I need to distract from the house too much, it just needs to kind of complement. So I'm gonna do probably a lot of pink. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna plant the rest of these island beds, the camellias and the abelias, and let y'all come along with me while I do that. So I hope y'all will enjoy this and I hope you'll enjoy the final result.
this is the finished product of the far right side bed and my front. I added in a few surprise elements. The creeping phlox that was planted in the front of my house over in that front bed was not doing so great and I moved it into this bed near the driveway and it's actually going to fill in one day in the future uh, each of these will get to be about 18 to 24 inches in width and maybe about six inches tall and in the springtime it'll bloom out hot pink and it'll just be a blanket of hot pink one day and i'm looking forward to that day uh, linda vodder has a lot of this creeping phlox in her front yard but she has the emerald blue which is actually a little bit of a lavender color this is drummond pink and i believe there are two or more varieties of pink in the creeping phlox and there may be more drum and pink and then some of the regular pink in this batch here so i think that's going to really be nice one day when it's all covered then you know about the knockout the yeah knockout roses and then here to kind of fill in some space and give me that chartreuse and that textural contrast i used three touch of gold hollies which i already had planted in my landscape but they weren't really happy where they were and i just thought they would make a better impact in this front garden bed and also to balance out the boxwood that is on this far left side of this bed i added in this boxwood and it was actually in the back corner where i had done the cottage garden the japanese maple garden so this is now in the front of the house getting a lot more center stage attention and then along the front of the bed i put four francis mason abelia but i think that they're pretty showy i really like the francis mason it's got nice little white blooms and then kind of a peachy color also red stems so there's a little line of those here and then I stopped that line and planted three little lime hydrangeas in a semicircle along the front so when these are in bloom and in a few years when they are full size they're going to take up this entire front space of this bed and that's going to really be a showstopper i think and then i came along with three more francis mason abelia over here on the far left and also three of the uh encore azalea carnation variety okay so this one was planted in the sun these two were planted more in the shade so that just gives you an idea your encore azaleas do much better when they are in the sun as opposed to your other azaleas like the traditional azalea can be in dappled sun and shade but these like full sun and I've got a pink bloom over here that I'll show y'all. So it's a pretty little bubblegum pink bloom. And for the mulch, I used just fine pine. It's actually not really fine. It's kind of in the middle of the nuggets and the fine pine, but it is, uh, it's a natural organic pine mulch. So in later days, I could always come in and add more of the ground cover, creeping phlox. I could plant some seasonal annuals here and there in this bed and just kind of have fun and play with it. 
but I am very pleased with how it turned out and I appreciate y'all coming along on the project with me and I will be doing the next bed that is over across the yard on the right on the left side of the lawn so be looking out for that video but anyway thanks y'all I hope y'all have a great week talk to you soon